Good evening. Emperor Palpatine here to defend my good, good friend, Bobby Kotick of Activision Blizzard. It has come to my attention recently that certain baseless accusations have come forward about Bobby threatening his employees. And I am here to tell you this is simply untrue. Bobby is a good, hard-working man that only wants what is best for his company and his empire. And even if he did threaten someone to be killed for speaking out against him, well... Is that really so bad? We at the Empire find that certain physical motivations help keep the peons in line. If a simple verbal warning does not work, an example must be made. <gasps> For the benefit of all and the glory of the Empire. So, do keep this in mind when speaking about people you don't know, or perhaps you will be made such an example of. <laughs> This is Crashed While Loading, the fusion of entertainment and information. Hello there. Weekly updates and opinions on video games. You are almost a jibble sandwich. <laughs> You're right. Movies. I'm about to do to you what Limp Bizkit did to music in the late 90s. TV shows. This is the way. This is the way. And so much more. Jeez, what do you want to do tonight? Ah, we, we, we need to go on a quick adventure. Ah, hello, people of the internet. Welcome to the 53rd episode of Crash World I can't do that the whole time. <coughs> Palpatine's a uh, very heavy smoker, and I uh, am an asthmatic, so not so much. Uh, <laughs> a little hard on the uh, old vocal lung cords. Uh, appreciate you for tuning in, episode 53 of Crash While Loading. I am your host, Ashen Phoenix. Uh, if you're listening live, awesome. You already know that you're at twitch.tv slash crash while loading. And if you're not, go to twitch.tv slash crash while loading and subscribe there. Um, if you're listening to it on podcast, uh, uh, buckle up. You're in for a shit show because that's about all I've got. Um, sorry I couldn't do it last week. We were doing our Thanksgiving last weekend, so I just never got around, and then I also wasn't feeling good at, like, all. I've been uh, very fatigued. Clearly, it's the Omicron Percy I ate virus, uh, which has only just now come out over the weekend, so I highly doubt it's that. I've just been... I had bubble gut. Yeah, it's that thing where you pee out of your butt. That was the kind of uh, problems I had. That was a lot of fun for several days until I remembered my <laughs> Imodium AD, and it fixed it right up. I uh, still feel like shit, though. So I had that going for me. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I, I have some news. I've got lots of stuff to review. Some of it's awful, like Houses October Built that our daughter recommended. Uh, it's a shit movie. And other things like Halo Infinite's multiplayer, which is a great multiplayer that I suck at, uh, with a terrible ship progression system. 
I've also recently started reading X-Men comics again out of for no fucking reason other than I've always loved the X-Men and just got out of it, and now I'm reading them again. Also, Ghostbusters Afterlife and Netflix's Arcane, as well as a lot of other stories. But first, I got to be those assholes that go to a hockey game and get to play musical chairs on the ice. <laughs> that was super cool. Uh, we went to a hockey game like two weekends ago with some friends, me and Sib, and uh, we were late. As because it was downtown Tulsa and it's a shit show to find any fucking place to park if you don't have cash on hand. Which guess what we didn't have ten dollars, which helped us save money because we found a parking lot that did it for eight. Yeah, that had nobody in it, so it worked out. But because of that, we weren't in our seats or anything like that when the uh, the the ice hockey skating thing uh, started. So we were waiting because apparently you can't go down to your seats while the pucks in play because you <laughs> find puck to the fucking face uh is apparently frowned on in uh most venues so we were sitting there waiting and some little little guy comes up and's like hi guys are you, are, are you guys together uh, and i was like yes we are sir my small hobbit like friend he was a very tiny man uh he's like would you guys like to, to play a game on the ice uh, and it was kind of funny because the other three sib uh and our friend brandy and aaron uh, Aaron, this guy Aaron, uh, looked at, they were all looking at each other. I could see it on their faces. Those motherfuckers were going to say no. They're going to be like, oh, I don't know. Eh, eh. And I, so I looked to them and I was like, I looked back at him and was like, yes, we would absolutely love to do that because I wanted to go on the fucking ice, honestly. I didn't care if they wanted to play or not. I didn't even know what we were going to play. He's like, okay, you'll be playing musical chairs. I'm like, oh, I haven't played that since I was, I don't know, like 10 Maybe, if that. Uh, so anyway, we got down there. We got to go up, you know, down the elevator, onto the ground floor, onto the ice, steering uh, in between. Uh, I'm going to call it rounds. Just because I, if Eric has listened to this, it's going to piss him off that I'm calling it hockey rounds. Um, <clears throat> uh, it was a lot of fun. Also, the chairs were super janky. They weren't like chair chairs, like even plastic chairs. They were like folding chairs, like the fabric ones. Uh, and some of them weren't there. It was just like a pole sticking up where like uh, something should cap it. So uh, I about gave myself an enema the first time. Um, I about sat right directly on top of that pole and just uh, just got in touch with my inner self for a moment. Uh, then I got out the second round, and then Sib and Aaron went at it. And uh, I'm pretty sure they... they 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 stopped it so Sib could win, uh, and she did. And we got Whataburger fancy ketchups and spicy ketchup shirts out of it. That was that was that's the, that's the whole story. It was a lot of fun. It was really cool. You know, I was teasing Brandy, the other girls, like, don't worry about it. Just don't think that there's like three thousand people staring down at you right now. I had no problem. I was like, yeah, crowd. I'm doing this stupid show. I've lost all sense of like um, self preservation and worth. Yeah, <clears throat> so I was I was living it up. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I did fall on the ice and got wet uh, because that second chair dumped me out. So, uh, but yeah, it was super cool. It was a lot of fun. It's not something a lot of people get to do. Um, not being able to skate or hockey, I've never been on the ice before, so that was really fun. Um, moving on to some reviews. I've got a lot. I've done, it's been two weeks, obviously. So the first one is, we watched a movie our daughter recommended. It's a scary, it's called Houses October Built. And these five fuckwits, uh, go off. They're like, we want to find the ultimate, uh, we rented an RV, uh, seven days before Halloween to find the ultimate scary Halloween venue. Which, by the way, these things are fucking open the entire month of October. If you really wanted to do it, you'd have been doing, you'd have been traveling the country. They just stayed in Texas, which Texas has a lot of great uh, spook houses. I know this because Sim and I have traveled. We actually have traveled and like up to St. Louis, and we went when we went to Branson and things like that to go specifically for spook houses and things like that. Um, we went to three in one, like two in one night, or maybe three in one night, or at least three in one weekend. I know we did that up in uh, St. Louis. Um, these fuckers are driving around Texas for hours on end during the day, and they go to one spook house a night. Like, I know in Texas you can go to multiples. You could at least do two in a single night. Here in even Tulsa, 
you could do two in a night if you plan it out correctly. And also get the fucking fast pass so you're not staying in line for four hours. So anyway, it's mostly, it's a lot of them, it's found footage, quote unquote, and it's not done, it's not acted incredibly well, like, it's not even very believable, like, the Blair Witch Project kids did a much more believable, like, found footage kind of thing in their acting abilities, but for the most part, it really does seem like they just traveled around to different actual haunts and just filmed what the fuck goes on in those, um... And then they did their own where it's like, it's called Blue Skeleton and it travels around uh, and it's invitation only. And then they actually try to kill them at the end. of. I'm not spoiling much because guess what? There's sequels. And you know what's in the sequels? The same five fucking people. So kind of also ruined it that at the end of it, they were supposedly all killed in some way. I won't spoil that, I guess. Honestly, I'm not suggest- I'm not advising these movies at all. So... If you don't want to be spoiling it, uh, turn it off for the next, like, minute. So they end up being buried alive at the end. And then we watch the the trailer for the second one, and apparently some cop finds one of them being buried alive. And then, of course, they all get unburied. And then, like, a year or two later, apparently, they're like, let's do it again, even though we almost died. And we're infamous on these chat rooms for these crazy people at these haunts. And it's just so fucking stupid. It was... The, the little girl on the cover that has, like, the doll mask with the weird clumps of hair, she's super creepy, uh, but she's about it. The rest of it was just bleh. It was, it was pretty boring. Um, something else I did recently, as I listened to uh, The Sandman on Audible, um, if you don't know what that is, uh, you're not a comic book guy, probably. Um, the Sandman is a Vertigo comic where, it, like, he's the Sandman. He's a aspect of dream along with his sister death um there's like uh destiny despair uh there's like seven of them i can't remember all of them off the top of my head um it's based off that comic book and this audiobook basically goes every chapter of it is basically the comic book i've actually started reading this is what's got me back into comics oddly enough so I started reading that on Comixology, and then I was like, oh, what the yeah, X-Men have been up to? And I started reading the X-Men like from back in 2012 when the original X-Men got transported to the future to stop Cyclops from being a dick. Shocker. Cyclops is a dick. Uh, but anyway, with the Sandman, it's uh, this is different because it's not one author uh, or narrator doing the whole thing. It's fully voiced acted, voice acted. And it's not like anybody, like, the actual um, Sandman, uh, Morpheus is his name, is uh, James McAvoy. You know, young Professor Xavier or Split uh, from the movie. I mean, he's just, you know, he's, in, he's James McAvoy. Um, but he does an excellent job. The, every character is fully voice acted by their own person uh, for the most part. They sh- a few of them share, but you can't tell because they're so vastly different characters. Um, but uh, it's narrated by Neil Gaiman. Uh, who's the the original writer of all this stuff? So if you're a fan of Neil Gaiman stuff, like uh, who does like Bad Omens and st- all sorts of stuff, he's he's way out there on a lot of things. Like the first one on Audible is free. The second one you had to, I had to use a credit for, but I I found it absolutely worth it. I was riveted. I loved it's it's fucking dark too, man. I, I won't lie to you. There are there's certain things uh, that happen in some of it, um, and it is really weird because it is so vastly different from comics um but it is connected to the dc universe that like when they mentioned the justice league now and again or uh was it john constantine's in it uh once at least uh it's a little weird because <laughs> it's like it's they're so all the characters other than that are so far out there um and unrelated to really the rest of dc that when they bring up something like uh the martian manhunter and anything like that it's a little it's like oh yeah that's right comic book it's super super weird but highly highly recommend the audible uh, audible sandman audio story um especially since the first one's free i i i don't know if it's free if you're just uh signed up for it or if it's just free in general i think it might be it's very well worth it um, so going on to comic books, like I said, I made me start reading those comics. The comics, um, of Sandman, basically the audiobook follows the comics, like almost word, literally word for word and, and a lot of them. Um, but it got me into the X-Men comics again. 
Um, I'm not up to the most recent stuff, and I'm going to have to go back even further because apparently like the there was a whole thing with the Phoenix Force, which I was vaguely aware of. Uh, that Tony Stark broke it and like it injected it into all the superheroes, and it totally fucked up like the ex- Cyclops' powers and uh, Emma uh, Frost's uh, you know telepathic abilities. Uh, she lost them, but she can only go Diamond. Magneto's powers are a fraction of what he used to be able to do. Uh, so I'm gonna have to go back, and of course, and apparently he uh, Scott Summers. Cyclops killed Xavier while influenced by the Phoenix, and that's been had a lot of repercussions. Uh, but I've really enjoyed it. I've I've really missed kind of X Men comics. I've been doing it on my tablet. It's not it's not the same as having a piece of paper on in front of you, but I've enjoyed it. I, I've missed them a lot uh, more than I I thought I would. Um, uh, so you know, there's that uh, X Men. And I also got turned off by the Grant Morrison run where he was switching characters up for no reason, like turning. Bobby Drake gay, which I have no problem when they introduce gay characters, but you can't take a 40-year-old character that's been nothing but a player and, you know, kind of a horn dog, and then be like, and now he's gay for no reason. Okay. Um, that's... Oh, um, hmm. Yeah, and he also fucked up with a lot of their powers and things like... He did, he did a lot of stuff that was just way outside, like, I get it with comics, but it was... It was as, so far out there. It wasn't believable. I hated him. I didn't. Apparently, a lot of people liked his run. I did not. I know a lot of you guys probably don't even care about comics, but screw you. It's my podcast. Um, something now. Two things that I absolutely loved: uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife and Arcane uh, League of Legends on Netflix. Uh, Afterlife first. I'm not going to spoil either one of these. I might actually do a spoiler review of these. I need to do some videos and stuff like that, but it's so hard to find time, especially this time of year. But um, if you are any fan of the original Ghostbusters, you absolutely must go see Afterlife. It was exactly the vibe of the very first Ghostbusters. It takes itself seriously, but not too seriously. It's got a couple jokes. A lot of people remember Ghostbusters as a comedy, but if you really go back to it, it's not. There's a few funny lines in it, um, <clears throat> but it's really more, it takes itself kind of seriously. And this was like that, like, um, it was Ghostbusters Goonies, because it follows a bunch of kids um, that are finding, uh, I, I don't know if it's spoilers, because I, I mean, I knew it from the trailers that it's Egon Spangler's house. And, I mean, if you watch the first five minutes, you know, even though they may not show it, you know who it is. He's got a He's using a proton pack and ghost traps and stuff. So it's Egon Spangler's grandkids, and they get his house because something happened to him. Um, he passed away at the you know beginning of the movie, which is not a spoiler, really. Um, and it just it feels it really feels like Goonies as the kids discover what their grandfather was, as they discover what the ghosts are. It's kind of funny that everybody forgot about like the New York Ghostbust ghost thing in the eighties because it's been thirty years now. And people just, it's kind of like a lot of comic books and, uh, you know, stories in, of like Dresden Files. People just don't want to believe those kinds of things, so they just don't. And it's that easy. People forget. Um, Paul Rudd's fantastic. The kids are f- really, really great actors. Um, <clears throat> it's just, it's it feels good. It's a great homage to the original. It continues that story with Gozer and Zool and all that stuff. Um also, make sure if you do go see it, stay till the very end. There is an end credit scene, like it's credit start, and then there's one, but there's one at the very end. There's actually two total. So stay till the very, very, very end if you go see it. Uh, well worth it. I thought it. It was very heartwarming. Um, but I absolutely loved it. I w- I'm looking forward to seeing it again sometime, you know, maybe when it comes out on TV. Got that big old TV. But Sib and I, we both... Enjoyed it. I was having my gastrointestinal distress. I was very uncomfortable. I was really gassy, and it was I was it, like painful on the way home. And I still enjoyed the movie despite feeling being fucking miserable and trying not to, you know, shit myself. That kind of thing. Um, and then moving on to Arcane League of Legends. Now I will go into this saying I know fuck all about League of Legends. I don't like the game. I even downloaded after watching this just to see if like, well, maybe I didn't give it a chance. Nope, not my kind of game. It's PvP. Uh, it's over the. It's uh, isometric, over the top kind of stuff. Uh, it's just not my bag. I don't enjoy it at all. 
That said, Arcane on Netflix. If you are not watching this, the car- yes, are they? That was Cloud probably looking out the window. <laughs> or was it a ghost? Eric is in the chat. Said the curtains were moving behind me. My dog sometimes peeks out the curtains when I'm not looking. So, <laughs> uh, but Arcane, honestly, if it is. I, I'm sure you've probably seen reviews and stuff like that calling it a masterpiece. I don't usually do that. It's a fucking masterpiece. I cannot wait to watch these night episodes again. I'm going to watch them again with Sib. I told her about it. I'm like, I didn't watch it with her because I thought it was going to be shit. I didn't want to waste her time. We don't have a lot of time to watch stuff together. Um, I'm watching this again. It is fantastic. The art style alone would be worth it. It's like, uh, we've all, if you're a gamer, you've all seen concept art. You know, it's painted, flowery. It looks like moving concept art, like well-animated Pixar-style concept art. It looks amazing. The characters are fluid. They move so smoothly. Um, the the story, the villains have great motivations, even the heroes and stuff like that. They, they have flaws. They're not perfect. Uh, it's just so well done. I, I don't want to even spoil any of it, but it it really, and, and the music selection, the choice, um, really, really, really uh, hits home. Like in those powerful moments, uh, it, the fight scenes are just fucking fantastic. I honestly, 10 of 10, uh, if I rated stuff like this, it would absolutely. Yes, I saw they're making. Uh, right, uh, Erica says right games are making a uh, Street Fighter style game of based on League of Legends. Uh, I will play that. I actually because of this show, I got oh what was that? A uh, Ruin Ruin King or something like that. It's basically an RPG that they just released based off League of Legends. Uh, and I've been playing it. It's turn based strategy combat with you know like. RPG element exploration on the map and stuff like that. Uh, I've enjoyed it. I've actually really, really enjoyed it. I don't mind turn-based combat stuff like JRPG style, and it's pretty similar to that. Um, I just don't enjoy League of Legends itself. It's not a fun game for me. But that game, uh, I haven't played a lot, which is why I was going to really review it, but I'll bring up that I was playing it. But the show itself, if you've got Netflix and you have not watched this, it is a crime against humanity. You seriously give it one episode, and if you're not hooked by that, I, I don't know what else to tell you other than you've, you're have you dead inside and you have no soul, and um, you should probably just end it all in a video game, of course. <laughs> but I, I, I can't honestly sing the praises of that show enough. The writing, the acting, the animation, everything came together in a way very rarely done on Netflix. Like I liked Castlevania, but even Castlevania wasn't on this level. Like, and I, Castlevania was very good. It was a really well done series, but it, it's, it's so far above that. I don't know. It's, I forget the animation studio that Riot Games has for this. I think it, they're, I think they're French, which is amazing that anything good came from the French, but I, I may be wrong. Uh, yeah, thank you, Ericus. That's all I ask. Give it a chance. Just give it one. And because I thought the same thing, I saw everyone f- raving about this. I'm like, oh, the fucking League of Legends fans, of course. Oh, I like League of Legends. I love the I love the show based on League of Legends. And I was like, all right, fine. I see. Keeps like IGN gave it a ten, and usually, <laughs> trust me, IGN grades are god awful. They just I don't go to IGN for my reviews, but. The Metacritic score was insane. It was like in the nines. So I was like, okay, fine. Watched an episode. Fuck. <laughs> and it was so good. Uh, and the great thing, too, is it uh, it's nine episodes, and every three of them are basically they're, uh, a small story arc. They're all connected, obviously. But it's like three episodes is, is three different time period kind of things, or I don't know, like trilogies. It's basically... Uh, three separate movies. If you do three episodes at once, it's one full movie's worth of, of content. Um, and the fucking cliffhangers every episode leaves you on. You're just, you're, you're chomping at the bit to get to the next one, or at least I was. So, moving on from my reviews. Um, now, this one's weird uh, to, to the news. I don't know, I, and I kind of f- feel bad, because I didn't, I use um, 
Streamlabs OBS. I showed Eric as how to use Streamlabs OBS. I thought Streamlabs OBS uh, was OBS, which is what I was using originally. I'm like, oh, well, this must just be their updated version of it um, in conjunction with Streamlabs. Turns out Streamlabs is kind of a piece of shit. Um, they, it was, since OBS was open source, uh, they just slapped their name in front of it and called it Streamlabs OBS, even though they didn't create it. And what they also did was they stole other assets, um, from other makers, like just basically copied them. They didn't copy paste them, but they copied them and put them into their Streamlabs thing and then charged money for it. I at least have never paid the money. I use the free stuff because I'm a cheap piece of shit. And um, what you see is good enough uh, for the number of, like, I don't, oh, hey, by the way, thanks to Reflex uh, CZN uh, for the follow a little over an hour ago before the show started. I appreciate the follow. Um, give you a shout out. But, uh, yeah, so it's really a weird deal. I mean, I'm not going to go into crazy details. I mean, most of you, if you, you don't do this, nobody's going to care, but it was interesting. It was trending on Twitter, which made me find it. Uh, it was through Kit, uh, Kitty, uh, who does the ESO stream. And I got eyes from my mouth. This is the sweetest girl you'll ever meet. I haven't met her, but like virtually I have. Sorry, I got I this. We got a new ice maker, and the ice cubes are small, and they come out of my cup, and it's really super annoying. Um, so, uh, the update to this is that Streamlabs says uh, we are taking immediate action to remove OBS from our name. Reads the comment. Streamlabs OBS is built on top of the OBS open source platform. Streamlabs OBS is also open source, and our code is publicly available. We take responsibility for our actions and will support our community. Uh, they knew what they were doing. But they, you know, taking assets and stuff like that and making... I, I I, honestly, I've been using this thing since RPM Radio. Um, so, I mean, was that three over three years, four years ago now? I've done... Counting this, I've done 153 podcast episodes between the two of them. And I had no idea that they were two separate companies. I honestly didn't know. So um, I'm glad they are kind of got called to the carpet on that. <laughs> Am I going to stop using them? I'm not that upset. Uh, I don't – as big of a pain in the ass as it is to set up the audio and the visuals and stuff like this. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to stop using the OBS one for stream uh, with Streamlabs. But I'll call it out. I'm not an entirely huge... Okay, I'm a huge hypocrite. Um, I think it's slimy, but it is also open source. So it's not technically anything wrong with it. It's just morally, it's a little on the shade side. Uh, moving on. <clears throat> now, I've not made it any uh, big secret that I'm not a huge fan of NFTs. Non-fungible tokens. Such a stupid friggin' word. Um, but honestly, neither is Xbox boss Phil Spencer. And I like Phil, unlike Bobby Kotick. Or, um... Oh, what's what was it? Oh, I just forgot his name. Nah, another piece of shit that led Daybreak Games and SOE. Uh, Smedley. John Smedley. Uh, unlike them, I actually like Kotick. As far as I know, he's never been to Epstein's Island, and he's never threatened to kill one of his employees, um, and he's never been a giant piece of shit. So, there's that. You got that going for you. Um, but he, he's not necessarily against NFTs so much as he's not a fan of the exploit, uh, exploitive NFTs, which is my problem with him, too. NFTs aren't going anywhere. Um, it's a, basically it's a fancy thing for blockchain. But the way it's being exploited in video games and through a lot of stuff, like I actually what was it was it Game Ranks? I just saw something. Uh no, it wasn't Game Ranks. But I had just seen a story where some idiot bought supposedly an NFT of a yacht in a game that's not released yet for like I want to say it was six hundred thousand or sixty or six hundred thousand dollars. Either one is ridiculous, um, and it was a dumbass looking yacht digitally. But it's stuff like that. I, I don't know why people are throwing money at these things, um, or 
the Left for Dead or whatever it was, uh, not Left for Dead, uh, Dead by Daylight that you know did an NFT of of Pinhead that you can buy. Well, yeah, that's great that you quote unquote own the uh, skin of that Pinhead, but if the servers go off, you don't own shit. So it doesn't really, it's not really something you digitally own. If somebody could just turn off the server, it's stored on and it's gone. Sure, you still own it. I mean, it's like owning paper gold in your gold portfolio. Sure. On paper, you own gold, but if the whole system collapsed and there's nobody, there's no gold left for when you turn that in, you don't actually own gold. What you own is a piece of paper, and in this case, what you own is a piece of digital garbage. Uh, you don't actually own a physical object, which is why I have bars of gold. Many, many bars, and I have no gold. <laughs> I have some silver. I was actually gifted silver one year for Christmas on my mail route. It was a gold and silver shop, and they gave me a little... Silver bar, which sounds awesome, but if you think silver at the time is worth like 25 bucks an ounce, so I mean, it's still a good gift. I'm not looking to get a silver gift horse in the mouth, it was just kind of cool. It had uh, Santa on it. <laughs> Buy our mailman Christmas presents, even if it's just like a thank you card, we appreciate it. Uh, oh, I got baklava. From one of my customers this year already. She did it before. Uh, she's a, a, an Indian lady. Very sweet. Love their family. Uh, they block the box. They don't get mad when I don't deliver their mail because their kid bar- parked in front of it. But no, she gave me like five pieces of baklava, which is like crazy sweet and really so delicious. And it's so much fun to say. Baklava. Chris tried it. Um, <laughs> she was like, so sweet she doesn't need a lot of sweets anymore so it was like yeah it's like it's uh it's a pastry candy it's really really sweet also super delicious but anyway uh so nfts uh what phil's has to say is what i'd say today on nfts all up i don't know why he says sounds like he's the fresh prince of bel-air what I said about NFTs all up is i think there's a lot of speculation and experimentation that's happening and that some of the creative, and that some of the creative that I see, apparently doesn't speak real well, that I see today feels more exploitative than about entertainment. I don't think it necessitates that every NFT game is exploitive. I just think we're kind of, you know, in a, that journey of people figuring it out. I can understand that. Early on, you see a lot of things that probably are not things you would want to have in your store. <laughs> and then it like has quotations again in the like there was that was all a quote, and then for some reason that sentence ends, and then it does quotes again for the next part. It's I don't game ranks um, weird. Uh, anyway, he says I think that uh, we looked at any storefront that said it was exploitative, it would do blah blah blah. Anyway. It's exploitative. A lot of the NFT stuff is doing it. And I'm glad somebody big in the industry is calling that stuff out uh, because it is. A lot of that is – I mean, it's it's all up in the air, and it's going to have a place in gaming at some point. But right now, I think it's being taken advantage of very in a very negative way because um, it's taking advantage of people's ignorance. A lot of people, like the uh, Squid Games uh, crypto that I had mentioned – where like three point three million dollars people were going into it, and it just they the guys that created it just closed up shop, disappeared, and took the money. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. You have to understand technology before you can invest in it. Otherwise, you're well, Congress. The internet is a series of tubes, <laughs> and when those tubes have information. <sighs> The hair clogs the tubes of information, (sighs) and the information gets slow. And then we have to call a plumber (sighs) and get Drano in the tubes. I forget which idiot senator or congressman called the internet a series of tubes, but it's an actual thing. Look up series of tubes. You'll find it. Uh, So moving on, uh, Adam Driver did uh, a one (laughs) Comic-Con (laughs) And <laughs> was like, I'm good, you bunch of sweaty-ass nerds. 
I mean, and I get it. He says he didn't enjoy his one and only Comic Con experience. And honestly, from his side, it seems like like us. It seems like a lot of fun. Like, oh, I love to be the guy that sits there all day and do that. And honestly, I thought of it. It'd be I I think it'd be cool. But I'm also I've been on the other side of the fandom. I know what that means to people. Like, and I think people like uh, Ray Park, who played Darth Maul, he gets it, man. I've met him, and uh, or or um. Jeremy Bullock that played the original Bubba Fett, Peter Mayhew that played Chewbacca, they got it. Like, they understood they were there because, and they had this job of going around the country f- being paid by other people because of their fans. And they played into that. They weren't there as part of the job. That was, I mean, they were there because that's their job, but they were there because they, they knew who was signing their paychecks, basically. And that's the fans. And if you treat the fans like crap, you end up getting, uh, a bad reputation like uh, David Prowess, the original Darth Vader body guy, he was kind of a dick at cons and he was not well liked. And um, if it showed in the difference in lines between someone like him and some of the, like Peter Mayhew, even though Mayhew was at all of them, he was always, he was just a good, decent guy. Ray Park was the same way, man. He, he complimented people's costumes. This is the early day before cosplay was even a word. And he just, he dug it. He just totally dug the whole experience. He knew why he was there. He knew he was making money. He knew he was there to, you know, hype up his character and his fandom. And it worked. Um, And if you're not familiar with that, like I suspect Adam Driver is, who I like as an actor, and I'm sure he's a great person, but if he didn't know that going in, I could see this being a miserable fucking experience. Um, (laughs) So... Uh, but he said, I didn't know the rules of a Comic-Con. <laughs> like, he calls it of a Comic-Con. Uh, and they're like, oh, no, you can't get a coffee. And I'm like, maybe I'll get a coffee in the hotel. And they're like, no, you can't get a coffee in the hotel. We have some masks in a bag if you would want to put a mask on in a bag. They had an option of, of like, an Iron, mask, Iron Man mask and a Darth Vader mask. If you don't go outside, they're like, put on a mask so nobody knows you who you are. And they're not... They're not meaning like a, a COVID mask. They're talking like uh, like how uh, who is it? Adam Savage would go around Comic Con dressed up as characters, um, <laughs> you know, and or what was it I saw recently? Uh, uh, the Witcher uh, Hen- Henry Cavill uh, went to uh, Will Smith and he had a mask on and he's like, "Can I get a picture?" And you know he. Uh, takes the mask off as they're taking the picture and then he looks down at uh will smith and it takes smith a minute he's like hey i know you <laughs> you know um he just he was just gag i like i love henry cavill for that stuff he always he's always pulling shit on his other stars and things like that um but he says i opened my window because i've been in my room for 24 hours before this thing uh we were supposed to do. And then there was a band at the bottom of the building playing the star Wars theme on repeat because we were all staying at the hotel. It was scary. You show up and it's like 2000 people who are very devoted. It's just a lot of energy as you can imagine. Uh, he said he did it only once. I saw what it was. I mean, it's nice. I'm not anxious to do it again. I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. Uh, also, I love that he was in The Last Duel, which is what he was kind of... Uh, he's he's going around the press. And apparently The Last Duel, which I think was... I think if I'm right... Yeah, Ridley Scott. Uh, it looks interesting. I think it looks good. I'm not willing to go to a movie theater to see it, but I love that it made $28 million in its opening weekend. Uh, it was 100 mil, uh, 100 mil to make. And it's got a lot... It's got Driver in it. It's got a lot of great people in it. But he came out as like... The movie failed because those millennials in their phones... Fo- I think you call them millennials. Um, millennials in their phones. They don't have the attention span for historic documentary filmmaking like I likes to do. And he was all pissed off at people for not going to see his stupid fucking movie. Like, dude, that's... that's and now he's got, I guess, House of Gucci is also his... Um, which that holds absolutely no interest for me, and I I actually like Lady Gaga as an actress. She did just fine in with that Matthew McConaughey movie. But my God, that looks just I don't give a shit about Gucci people. I don't care about the stupid clothes, and I don't give I don't know shit or care give a shit about the stupid shitty family that makes those purses and clothes and I don't know, whatever the fuck they do. 
Uh, the last duel I'll watch eventually. Um, but pff, it's just so funny when they he's a lot of these like big older actors like Scott and uh, I don't think Coppola is still around, but I think he he'd be one of them that are like bitch about the Marvel movies and stuff like that. It's just like, dude, get off your soapbox. You you've done several great movies and you're a brilliant person, but you are severely losing touch with your audience, and that's probably part of the problem why no one wants to go see your bullshit stuff. Uh, so speaking of, uh, well, not Marvel movies, but st- stuff that's you know Disney owned. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, Patty Jenkins and Ryan Johnson's reportedly shelved Star Wars projects because of creative differences. Or is it just because Ryan Johnson is a giant pile of dog shit when it comes to writing a Star Wars story and single-handedly took down the entire franchise, along with Kathleen Kennedy? Um, Yeah, that's probably more of it. Um, The one that is a bummer is that Patty Jenkins' Rogue Squadron uh, is basically shelved, um, probably canceled at this point. The thing is, why would they... I I don't get this. They announced this last year like early last year it wasn't even meant to start production until 2022 yeah they announced it december of 2020 uh was her film's announcement they did a little thing talking about how her family was uh navy uh not navy air force and you know fighter pilots and stuff like that so she was looking forward to making a top gun in space basically why would you say that when you weren't going to start production for another two years and you didn't even have a script yet. And you announced that as if it was a big deal. And now it's because she's going to, she's doing the next wonder woman. So the times don't match up. Well, why would, then why did you announce it? Don't announce shit that you haven't started. Like, you know, at all. Just don't do that. It's idiotic. Um, and Disney's had a real problem with this lately. Like they, the, um, the Republic one that was gonna star Gina Carano, I think, the Ranger one. And then of course she she did a couple tweets that people didn't like, even though uh Pascal has done far worse. But, you know, he's got the right viewpoint. Um so she's been can she got cancelled and taken out of the show and uh well at least for now. I don't think that's gonna I'm starting to wonder if that'll last. I don't know if she'll go back to them though. Um but don't announce shit and then be like, hmm, yeah. Let's see what the, uh, that's, I was curious what the, uh, ugh, the fact that people, there's still a handful of people that are like, Ryan Johnson's movie was great. You are a dog shit human being and you should feel like a dog shit human being. So anyway, yeah, we lost, uh, thankfully the, the trilogy he was supposed to do, I'm pretty sure is done and dead and it needs to stay buried. Uh, hers, while Wonder Woman 84 was awesome. Oh, it's just not good. The first Wonder Woman movie was really good. So she's got it in her. Just keep fucking cat people out of it. Hmm. I think we've learned between cats and Cheetah and the Wonder Woman 1984. Keep cat people out of your movies. You want them to be successful. That is, that's the takeaway. That's the takeaway I've got. Uh, so, in other comic news, uh, Dark Horse is to resume publishing Star Wars comics in 2022. For those of you that don't know, um, this is more, I just, it's a feel-good thing for me, because for the longest time, the Star Wars novels were published by Dark Horse Comics, um, like the the Heir to the Empire and things like that. Um, they, they made all those, uh, the tales of... Uh, Tales of the Jedi, which were like Nomi Sunrider and stuff. Those are all Dark Horse, um, you know, through Marvel. And now Marvel's been publishing the Star Wars comics, and they're going to continue, but they're also going to let Dark Horse do some. I wonder if they'll be a little bit darker and grittier stuff. But um, I think that's cool. I'm glad um, that they're going to actually share again. It doesn't mean anything. Not really. But I think it's cool. Uh, So just a quick blurb on that. Uh, moving on to, I, I don't, I have absolutely no intention of playing the Grand Theft Auto trilogy that came out, uh, the remaster. Uh, one of them is free on Game Pass, uh, which is actually the only one I would want to play, and I forget which one that was now. Uh, I think it was San Andreas, I want to say. 
So it's Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and San Andreas uh, were were the three games that came out on this trilogy, the definitive edition. Uh, and apparently they are ho- playing horrible. Like, and the problem with this is, is they removed the original versions off of like the stores, like Steam and things like that. They, the ones that had a huge modding community had been uh, modders had upgraded and made amazing. They removed all that and um, put these janky ass versions with a new look and a lot of a lot of bugs and stuff. Uh, it's really weird that Rockstar they basically cyberpunked themselves. Like they and they didn't need to, because nobody was asking for these. I mean, yeah, okay, some people were asking for them, but like nobody was like, "Oh, I can't wait until this comes out and blah blah blah." I mean, people were excited once they announced it, but if you were knew what you were releasing and nobody knew it was coming out, why didn't you just put it back in the oven and before you announced it? I, I don't understand why. Um, Rockstar did this. Uh, I don't think they're going to take the hit Cyberpunk's uh, CD Projekt Red did uh, because it wasn't like, you know, like Cyberpunk was its own thing. It was supposed to be amazing. It was the next best thing in video games. Uh, Jesus was going to come down with like a bionic arm and uh, jerk off uh, Keanu Reeves and everyone was going to be happy about it. And, And then it turned out we ended up with like Joe Pesci and uh, I don't know the hobo down the street just like swapping spit and it's just awful. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go with that. Uh, with this, no, you no, know, it's just I don't I don't know why they would have done this, but yeah, the the versions that they released, they just uh, like they removed things like fog, which you know, increase the draw distance, which sounds great, but a lot of times that fog isn't just there to hide pop-up. It's there as ambience. It's there as part of the, the game, in a way. It it adds a layer to it. Uh, like, the reason the original Silent Hill had fog was because they could, it was to hide the draw distance. It was very limited on the original PlayStation how far they could go out there. However, if you updated that game and you you removed the fog, you'd remove half of Silent Hill. The fog in, was a, a character in of itself and, and it continued to be even when they could spread the, the distance out later on. You don't just remove things just because you got a stronger computer. Sometimes that stuff is there for a reason. Uh, but yeah, they they just, uh, it was it's, it's kind of heartbreaking to see. Um, in fact, it was so bad, their definitive edition, they've actually came out since this article here, uh, and said they're going to bring the old versions back onto Steam so people can just buy those again. Yeah, and it kind of goes to, uh, um, you know, video game pre- uh, preservation is a big deal uh, in a lot of things. And it kind of sucks, too, that these the companies can just take the old version off and be like, and this is the new way, the definitive edition. This is how it's supposed to be played from here on out, even though it's not the same, it's not as good as the versions that we had before. So you had a version that was working, had great mods and stuff like that, or versions that you could get on like your Xbox or, or PlayStation that worked fine, and then you take those away and give us a definitive edition that's supposed to be the best version of all of them, and it's half of what it should be. Uh, it's just, I don't get it. Like, it's, I, I, Does it come off as a money grab? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, it it kind of, kind of does. So uh, it, I just I don't understand why they would do that other than the money, and it kind of bit them in the butt. But like I said, I I think they're taking a hit, and it it made it look exactly like the cash grab it is. But at the same time, by the time, uh, let's see what else like Grand Theft Auto Six comes out or whatever else uh they're gonna release i don't think anyone will remember this they'll fix it they'll get it back working and it'll be over but for now it does kind of suck for a lot of people i know a lot of people were super psyched about it um especially when you just came off of the mass effect uh remaster which was really well done and i played through all three of those games and they were fantastic uh, the upgrades that they made it was it was just so good and then like 
it took a lot of work though it takes a lot of work to do something like it seems like it'd be oh it's super easy Mm -hmm. yeah no don't screw with shit if you're not gonna go all in is the rule Uh, um speaking of screwing with shit uh eg7 uh enad global 7 which is now the company that owns daybreak games uh has for about a year now uh has made some announcements and that includes they're reviving a marvel mmorpg they were promised uh they had promised and has been canceled uh they're uh, still promising console and a graphics update for lord of the rings online now i have not made my utter hatred and disdain for Daybreak Games a secret. I have hated that company since Columbus Nova, the Russian conglomerate that took them over, completely gutted one of my favorite fucking games of all time, and that was, you know, EverQuest and EverQuest 2, and just dog, just, just, just creamy shat all over all of it. Um, now, the Enad Global 7, I'm giving them time. Uh, they've, it's been a year now, and that seems like a lot of time, but I have a feeling they have a lot of crap to sweep up, and they even say here it's been a period of uh, transition uh, for the company. Uh, they've explained uh, that it was basically a calling call. Uh, it says here in the article, essentially a way of explaining why the company's incomes have stabilized at over 400% revenues compared to this quarter last year now that it stopped buying up small and mid-sized studios though the outlook of the next quarter looks even better. So they've been buying up studios um, to create games, That something that hadn't been done uh, under Columbus Nova at all. They were just gutting everything and closing it all down and just just milking what they had until they couldn't, and then they sold it. Um, so they um there's they had a chart as they said first of all daybreak continues to promise a major revamp to upgrades of visuals modernize the experience and release on consoles for lord of the rings online which is crazy to think that that game of all games is not uh, on a console yet because that is uh, a game that seems like it'd be a good fit for consoles graphically and stuff like that um it'd be super easy for all any uh even like uh the xbox one and ps4 generations to easily run that stuff um yeah i mean final fantasy 14 does really good with the controller if they follow what the way they do theirs i don't know how people do it uh i play final fantasy 14 still finished heaven's word by the way but at least the you know the the 2.3.0 part now i'm on the stuff after 3.1 and above um People do it, though. People actually on PCs play with the damn controller, which I think is insane. But I also have a gaming mouse that has, you know, 12 buttons on the side. So maybe that's why I'm not having to click on mouse and stuff like that. Could be. Uh, They also said um, they're plotting good things for DC Universe Online, which is crazy. I forget that game still exists. Uh, Investment in graphic upgrade and the large expansion content content to date for 2023. So they're really shooting out there. Um, shooter fans keep an eye on uh, Antimatter Games, Rising Stored, Inspired Military Shooter, MMO as well. So, I mean, they're they're producing stuff. Uh, let's see, they had here. Uh, that's so tiny. The I hate when people do like infographics, but they like they don't make it so that you can blow it up. Um, but a lot of uh, and then there's the Marvel IP based multiplayer, uh, mul- massively multiplayer game done by Dimensional Inc. Studios in Austin, Texas, um, who was uh, it was led by Jack Emmerich, who designed and helmed City of Heroes, which a lot of people uh, liked. A lot of people kind of missed that game. Yeah, that was a good game. A lot of people, a little salty that it got closed down. Uh, Funcom, looking at you. <laughs> How's that Conan shit working out for you? Real great, I'm sure. So no, it's I, I'm I'm hopeful that Daybreak can pull up, and that if these things are successful, maybe they'll start work. Give it, they'll give us a, an EverQuest MMO finally, uh, something new. The last one's two thousand four, two thousand four. It's been almost you know three more years. It's been twenty years, so it's been sixteen years now, seventeen years now, since uh, an EverQuest game came out. That's insane that one of the biggest franchises of the 2000s in in computer gaming has not had a sequel in 16 years. 
It's just idiotic. Um, so moving on, I don't know. I know I've said this before. I am so tired of talking about Activision Blizzard. <laughs> But it keeps happening. Like, it's not getting better. So I feel like I at least report on it um, and give my two cents. Uh, at least this one's not just anybody. Uh, it's Bobby Kotick, who we all know is a stand-up guy, according to Emperor Palpatine. Or is he? He's not. Uh, he's basically a giant piece of shit, apparently. Uh, a lot of these guys, uh, I was talking to, we were talking to Jazz uh, about Smedley. Now, and uh, Smedley, uh, I don't think as a person, is very good, but he did a lot of great things at uh, Sony Online and for EverQuest and things like that. That doesn't, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a weird thing. I meant to look this up, and I totally forgot. Uh, CEOs, uh, what is it? Psycho. Yeah. There's a, a a thing where yeah, that's called the uh, a lot of CEOs and you see the and these major companies they're also not always the most stable people. Uh some of them I forget I want to say here. Yeah, here it is. I found it. It's on Forbes. This is back from 2019. Man, my memory is amazing. I remember shit from way back far. But it says roughly 4% to as high as 12% of CEOs exhibit psychotic traits, according to some experts' estimates. Many times more than 1% uh, than the many times more than the 1% round 1% rate found in the general population, and more in line with the 15% rate found in prisons. Yes, Ericus, I want my hundred dollars back from Landmark as well. You and me both, buddy. Jazz would like her 200 because she paid for it twice. Uh, but yeah, so ha- think of that. Four to as high as 12% of CEOs exhibit psychotic traits, uh, which in the general population, somebody with it would have a psychotic trait. You At 1%, so one in 100 would have a psychotic psychotic traits. And now that doesn't mean they're killers. They're, you don't have to, to be a psychopath. It doesn't mean you're like... Dexter or anything like that. There's different levels of psychosis, psychopathias. Uh, I'm a doctor. Don't worry about it. Um, it says here, uh, I would say that psychopaths or people with psychopathic traits, psychopathic, that's a good way to put it, if you are uh, a speaker of the English language, uh, thrive in chaos and know that others don't. So they will often create chaos at work for this reason. Boy, have I had some fucking supervisors that fit that goddamn description. <laughs> I'm sure anybody listening to this knows what I'm talking about. Uh, as the right-hand person and with the element of control over the finances as well as the strategy, CFOs can work to create uh, certainty and stability for people to mitigate this. So uh, those are chief financial officers. So it's... This is what made me think of this because you've got people like Smedley, who I talked about. Um, you've got this Bobby Kotick guy that clearly are not the best and most stable people. Um, so apparently, back in 2006, CEO Bobby Kotick's assistants complained that he had harassed her and even threatened in a voicemail to have her killed. Like, I do a lot of joking at work, but I can't say I've ever threatened to kill a coworker or have one killed. Uh, and it said here, quote, Mr. Kotick quickly apologized 16 years ago for the obviously hyperbolic and inappropriate voicemail, and he deeply regrets the exaggeration in tone of his voicemail to this day. An Activision spokesman told the World Journal, yeah, uh, or here's the thing, maybe don't call somebody, uh, like, and threaten to have them killed in a voicemail. Just a thought. I've never done that, uh, ever as a non-psychopathic person. And I don't know if the, uh, from what I've, I've listened to a lot of stuff on this 
Um, see his big stupid smiley face. Apparently, what it was is, it sounds like she there was a lot of uh, sexual allegations coming out at the time in 2006, mind you. Um, and it, it sounds like she was threatening to come forward with them, so he threatened to have her killed if she did, allegedly. Um, now you have to think 2006. This is two years after World of Warcraft came out. This is in the peak golden era of Blizzard and uh, uh, World of Warcraft. Like, this is this is, is some of the best it, it ever got at that time. They were making money hand over fist. They were, I don't know, snorting blow off of hookers' asses and all sorts of crazy stuff. They just, they, I mean, these people could do no wrong. Um so it's it, it's I mean I'm not I'm, I'm again I'm not saying that's the excuse I'm just putting you in the mind frame of where he was at at that time, like this company was on top of the gaming industry. On everything, um, it was it was if I remember right, it was the biggest video game to have ever released. The only thing that I know that's beat it now is uh, Grand Theft Auto Five, which is the biggest multimedia thing that's in media that's made the most money in the history of ever in movies, uh, video games, music, all that. Uh, it's that's beat out every other form of entertainment at, uh, alone. But at the time world of Warcraft was where it was at. I, I mean, they peaked at 14 to uh, 15 million uh, subscribers. I mean, think of that $15 a person times 15 million a month. That's a, that's a little bit of money there, mate. Yeah, that's it's a tad, tad bit of money. So yeah, and this this shit goes to people's heads, and it absolutely did in this case. And that's I think that's where a lot of this culture uh, in Activision Blizzard come from. And now, the thing is, I've got several articles here on this. Uh, let's see here. Uh, like one of them is, well, let's see, this is Bloomberg. According to Bloomberg that, um, you know, the board is actually still standing behind Kotick. Even though all this stuff, uh, 1,500 Activision Blizzard employees signed a petition calling for uh, Kotick to be removed, uh, but a group of just 10 people will ultimately decide uh, the embezzled leader's fate. So these are his buddies. Like, these are all people uh, put there in a way by him. They've He's made them millions of dollars over his 30 years there, nearly 30 years at, at, at Activision and Blizzard. Um, they, they're they all friends. Why why are they going to get rid of somebody? They You think that they didn't know this stuff was going on? And if they didn't, they didn't know it willfully. They willfully ignored it uh, to the point where, like, there was one guy that had harassed an employee. He was a supervisor. The HR department said, we need to get rid of him. He needs to be fired. Like, this is unacceptable. Kotick personally came down from on high and uh, basically pardoned him and said, no, we're not going to get rid of him. We need him. Uh, he's a friend of mine. He's a buddy. And he stays. So fuck that lady um, because, I mean, look at her. Look at those tits. Yeah. She knew what she was in for. Look how she was dressed. Yeah. Yeah. I feel slimy even joking about that. But that's what I'm here for. Uh, I joke about slimy things, so you don't have to. So, yeah, he, he pardoned that guy. And that, now how that was just one story. How many times did this stuff happen? And he, he was saying here in another article uh, that he might resign if he, quote, can't fix the culture. Uh, oh, and there's been an update on 11. Oh, this is sometime. Let's see. Uh, let's see. As of 11:22, uh, Bobby held a meeting with talk executives to discuss the state of Activision in the face of recent controversy and allegations. The CEO told, told his colleagues that he'd consider resigning if countermeasures in place to combat the developers' criminally toxic workplace culture didn't fix issues with speed. Dude. You are the criminally toxic worst place culture. You're the reason it's like this. You've let this go on for 30 years. You, I, I mean, give it probably since World of Warcraft did it. So not the entire time. Maybe he started as a good guy. I don't know. Uh, I don't know his heart. I'm not Jesus. I'm just saying he's going to burn in a fiery lake that burns but does not consume. But I'm not his judge. 
<laughs> or am I? Um, yeah, so a workplace excellence committee is being implemented. Yeah, because nothing says a workplace excellence committee. Nothing fixes a problem like another committee made of the same people that worked there while all this stuff was also going on. Also, don't forget the lady vice pre co co CEO uh, of Blizzard that was had just quit because she couldn't get fair pay. Now I'd, I'm not one. I'm not on the um, uh, wage gap thing in most instances uh, with women and men. There's actually a lot of statistic reasons some women. The statistics don't match women and men uh, because they take things like maternity leave and uh, stuff like that, which. When you do that, it cuts into how much you got paid because you're not there the whole time. Uh, although a lot of companies do still pay it, but for the most part, like at the post office, it doesn't matter what your what's between your legs. You it starts with your start date, and it doesn't even <laughs> it, like for us, our raises aren't even based off of our ability uh, to do anything accurately. It's just the amount of time you haven't slit your wrists and stayed at the post office. So, like. Um, I mean, or if you want to do it, there's, uh, there's one dude there that he could have retired by now, but when he got hired, he was high. I've seen a pay chart at the post office. They used to, in the eighties, they came in at $26 an hour starting pay. Now at the post office is just under 17 for the exact same job. So what's that guy getting paid for doing the same job I'm doing every single day? It's a wage gap. He, we're both male. He's older. He just got hired back when things were, uh, you know, being paid far differently than they are now. Does it suck? Yeah, but I don't hold it against him. It's just the post office being shitty. Um, but for like my wife, she gets paid more than me because she got there a year earlier than I did, and her route's a little bigger. So there's a wage gap, but it goes in her favor, not in mine. That's how that stuff works. Now with this, uh, when they uh, up up. Did the uh, the dude and the chick to the top of uh, Blizzard there? Uh, if I remember right, she had more time than he did, and they both got this position at the exact same time as I've heard it. And he was getting paid more than she was, and when she demanded to uh, be paid the same he was getting paid, they just told her no, and that's when she uh, resigned. And that's when then they were like, well, I mean, we can do that. Well, you told her no already. And that's where also I think the $1 million uh, charitable donation to the f the women's thing that she was going to uh, came from because they were trying to hush that up. Didn't work too well. But that that is a wage gap. That is – and it's idiotic. Like this company already knows they're under a microphone uh, – microphone, <laughs> under a uh, microscope. So you, you bring in a man and a woman co-leading the company to try to show how woke you are. And you still, still fuck it up and give the dude more money than the girl. Like, if anything, you should have done it the other, like, just common goddamn sense. You give the chick more money than the dude just to show how great you are. Like, that was a missed opportunity. She could suck at her job and just sit there eating Pez all day out of, you know, Boba Fett's head. Who gives a shit? Give her the more money. <laughs> like, I don't understand. Like, you're you're hemorrhaging employees. You're hemorrhaging money. Try to make something look good on you, and they fucked it up, and that's why she left. So, it's just, I don't understand this goddamn company. And I just feel like I'm banging my head against the monitor here. So, yeah. So, Kodak, he's, he's honestly, and at this point, it's been, uh, the last update was the 22nd. Today is the 29th as of this recording. So we are exactly a week out. Uh, if you go back to the 18th when this, uh, oh wait, no, the original story was, uh, it doesn't have, so at least as far back as the 18th. So a week and a half. At this point, if he hasn't left, he's not leaving. Uh, he's just going to, unless something else even more damning than threatening to kill, have somebody killed comes out, which what else is there? I mean, I've heard uh, Epstein rumors uh, that he was also a big friend of Jeffrey Epstein, who his uh, his lady friend is going on started trial today. I'm curious. To, I'm amazed that she's made it that long. Um, so I'm sure he's a super great guy out on you know Kitty Fucker Island. 
Um, you know, just just a wonderful, wonderful dude, allegedly. Uh, yeah, Pop, if you put allegedly in front of everything, it makes anything you say alleged and not fact or liable. Um, so it's just, I, I don't understand this goddamn company. I really don't, no matter how hard I try. Uh, and it doesn't help the more I know about it. All these stupid pictures of him smiling in a business suit or looking like this was one where he's looking over a couch like he's getting ready to watch fucking Barney just pisses me off. It's just I'm tired of looking at this dumb guy's big, stupid, fat, smiling head. Uh, I, I, I don't know. And then on top of that, all the, you know, they, they, uh, either them postponing Overwatch and well, I forget the uh, Diablo Four. So I just that I, I I don't know how this company is ever gonna really recover. Activision is gonna go on no matter what. Um, but Blizzard I think is taking the really hard hit on this because people still will buy Activision games. I mean, Call of Duty is still their biggest thing, and Kodak has almost nothing to do with that. So. I don't know, man. Uh, I just, I wish they would just fucking stop and, like, pull their head out of their ass so I didn't have to talk about fucking Activision Blizzard anymore because I'm getting kind of tired of it. Yeah, it gets old. <laughs> it really does. Uh, like, Eric, is like how you allegedly love this podcast. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but I can't sue you for it uh, for being a, 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 for hurt my feelings. I'm sorry, I need a moment. I really thought you loved me. I thought we had something deep. <laughs> we shared maple syrup together. I, I, I thought there was something there. It hurts so much. I have to stop the podcast now. I can't carry on. Mostly also because I'm out of stories to talk about. Uh, yeah, but anyway, fuck you, Ericus. So... <laughs> Love you, buddy. I noticed you've been playing Final Fantasy XIV lately. Ha ha! Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. It's a good game. Uh. So anyway, that's all I've got. That's that's all the bullshit. I could just keep talking and bullshit out of my butt. But there's the outro music, so I can't do that now. Gotta gotta wrap it up, yo, dog. Uh. Hopefully, uh, I'll be able to keep things consistent. It's I don't know. I honestly. I almost didn't get this episode done, and I was, I've been so fatigued and tired, not feeling great lately. Um, kind of sucks. I'm not thrilled with it. It's also that kind of time of year at the post office, so hopefully, like today, I thought today was going to suck, was not nearly as bad as I had thought it would be. Uh, so we'll see. I'm going to try to keep things up to date. I may miss a few episodes. It's always hard this time of year. Um, and hopefully next year I can start doing, try to do some new stuff. I want to get into video stuff, like, I don't know, uploading videos and things of stuff, and maybe instead of just one on in addition to the podcast. I don't know if anyone gives a shit about those. There's already like four gajillion people that do that, uh, give their shitty opinions on stuff, but it's my shitty opinion. So that makes it mean more because I am humble about my amazing shitty opinion. This is the most important opinion out there. Eat your heart out, Asmongold. Uh, so anyway... Uh, thanks for tuning in. I uh, appreciate it. Um, uh, Twitch.tv slash Crash While Loading. Join the Discord if you'd like. If you have uh, stories you think are interesting, feel free to put them in the news junk section. Until um, then, I am Ashton Phoenix. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week. And keep your ass humble. Just like me. Music, as always, is provided by Husky by the Geek. Visit him at youtube.com slash huskybythegeek to hear all his latest in video game rock covers and original music. <laughs>